What's up, y'all? Alright, so today we're gonna be reacting to the odd ones out growing up without cable. I wonder what this is gonna be about. Cause like in 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 in, in, in the Lathona, they had Clifford, Dragon Tail. This, this might be something I, I, I can relate. Let's go, you guys. Imagine if Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu never existed. What they would didn't. you be watching five. right now? Would you be watching this? Spongebob. I don't think so. You'd be watching this box right here. A Spongebob. Hello vision? On this device, instead of picking what you wanted <laughs> to watch and when you wanted to watch it, the television would decide all that for you. And instead of watching a single five second skippable ad in the beginning, you'd have to watch five 30 second long unskippable ads. Can you think of anything more annoying? An advertisement right in the middle of your show? I don't know if my parents were being cheap or trying to discourage an unhealthy habit of watching too much TV, but growing up, my parents didn't have cable television at all in the house. Now, in this modern day and age of online content, some of you are living perfectly content lives without cable. I know I am. But you have to understand, in the early 2000s, online video wasn't a thing. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that have? This guy at a zoo? That's lame. So being an early 2000s kid, you had to get your cartoons on the TV. And if your parents didn't pay $65 a month to get cable, then you didn't get the channels with SpongeBob, Jimmy Neutron, no, or Courage the Cowardly Dog. No, no. You know, you know, was this green brother and sister called PBS Kids, and Yay. whatever these things were. PBS Tubby Kids Tubby. stands for Public Broadcasting Service. Kids. That meant all the shows on PBS Kids were government or privately funded. So the shows on PBS didn't really have any commercials per se, but they did have the same sponsorship ads that would play a message before every show. If you grew up on PBS Kids, then Juicy Juice and Hell Where yeah. a Kid Can Be a Kid is just a yeah. in your memory. And also, every show would thank you, the viewer, for watching, and I think that's really nice. So, everyone watching thank this... You. You're welcome. I'm kind of glad my parents didn't buy cable. Because instead of spending hours of my time watching mindless television, I spent hours of my time watching television with morals. And math. Yep, a lot of shows on PBS were either educational or taught you how to hey, be a good yeah. person. The shows I'm going to mention had pretty crazy concepts, but the conflicts in each episode were very down-to-earth and slice of life -y, almost like the shows were made for children. Like in Clifford the Big Red Dog. Clifford! This show about this girl's dog who I grew up to be the a freaking house for no be my shit, reason, bro. except for the fact that the girl loved the dog so much that he grew up to be a monster. So that means <laughs> if your dog is normal-sized, you don't love it enough. Aww. And it probably doesn't love you. So, yeah, uh -huh. giant red dog is a pretty weird premise, but they the episodes were shit, about bro. everyday things. Like, this blue dog feels bad that he tore up his owner's sweater, and his friends tell him to just be honest, and he does, and everyone's happy. Or the episode where this new dog is really he's happened. missing a leg, and then Clifford and his friends have to learn that having three legs still means you can accomplish a lot of things any normal human can do. I mean, dog. And I rate this <laughs> show a 10 out of 10. Next is Dragon Tales, Yay. a show that made dragons Dragon Tales. friendly. There's Org, he's the biggest, not so brave of heart. There's Cassie, she's so shy, but so very smart. There's Zack and Wheezy and their tales of fun. Cause you know, she's <laughs> my shit, bro. Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales. It's almost time for Dragon Tales. The show was pretty similar to Clifford. The characters would spend an episode learning everyday things like how to do a cartwheel, or they would try to make it rain so they could show their friend what a rainbow looks like. And there was also this grandpa dragon who knew Spanish for some reason. Don't come too close, niños. And that wasn't the weirdest thing on the show, actually. There was also a dragon character in a wheelchair, which, just like Clifford, is a good character because it teaches kids that disabled people are still people who can accomplish a lot of things. But I think it's a weird combination of two things. A dragon, a mythical beast known for destroying cities, in a wheelchair? If you wanted to stop a dragon from destroying your city, then you just don't install wheelchair ramps anywhere. I should stop talking. I rate the show a 10 out of 10. Now let's Yay. talk about Arthur. Here's some fun uh, trivia. I even, I even did it to him, bro. Personally, I don't see it. Basically, it was a show about Arthur and his other furry friends learning lessons 
but Arthur tended to tackle more serious subjects than the other two shows. We're like, they have be episodes where DW hears her parents get in a fight and she worries about them getting a divorce, or the episode where Arthur Falcon punches his little sister, and even having to deal with someone you know getting cancer. I don't care, you would've had a KD hammer. gets treatment and lives, by the way. I didn't know I understand that episode when I was younger. 10 out of 10. Next, let's talk about my favorite show on PBS Kids. Cyber Chase. Cyber Chase, we're moving, we're beating hackers. I know I understand it when I was over. I do sit down and watch it. This show didn't teach kids morals or how to properly treat the disabled. I it didn't know I understand it more important. Math. Cyber Chase is set inside a virtual computer world, and this one I ain't never understand what the hell going on. Is supposed to be the queen slash protector of this world, but she sucks at her job because the villain of the show, Christopher Lloyd, infects her with a virus. So now these three kids have to go on adventures using math principles to thwart the bad guy's plans to save mommy board, m motherboard, mommy, mommy board, board. What? mommy, mom, come on, <laughs> mommy, no. We need to save Bobby Board. <laughs> and unlike all the other shows, this show had an overarching story. The kids would always get this close to saving Motherboard, but nothing they did worked. When I was a kid, I always wondered how much longer it would be until they finally saved her. And they never did. The show's been going on for 16 years, and they're still learning new math principles trying to save Motherboard. I think they're at calculus at this point. The show is oh, no. slower than an actual school. What kind of a show makes you wait 16 years for a conclusion? Cyber Chase does, and it's one of the best shows ever I'm created. Don't know what the hell going on. The last show I want to bring up is called Caillou. All you need to know about Caillou is that I hate him. He Caillou a is a four-year-old and a demon. He constantly throws a tantrum whenever he doesn't get his way. Even in his theme song, he mentions how much of a brat he is. No way. Nah, hang on. I seen the little boy do this. I got. Well, you're gonna it's a boy that go to my. I'm gonna tell you. The world doesn't revolve around you. Now you might be thinking, James, this kid is four years old. Of course he's gonna be a brat. And I agree. But a big problem with Caillou isn't the fact that he's a brat but it's with his spineless parents. Caillou's mom just lets him get away with everything. Whenever I misbehaved, you know what happened to me? I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Caillou? <laughs> Nothing! Not once does Caillou ever get punished! <laughs> it's always his mom just being like, Caillou, what you said wasn't very nice. Now go behave, okay? Zero out of ten with the show with just the humans. I hate it. I just realized Why that all the shows I mentioned were animated, but there was a lot of non-animated shows that I still watch. Yeah, like, between the lion, bro. Shows fit the theme of my channel. Or it could make a part two. I can do whatever I want. Now, as a die-hard PBS fanboy, I think I speak for everyone when I say that what PBS was missing was a crossover episode. How hard would it have been for the Clifford people and the Dragon Tails people to coordinate an episode where the three-legged dog finds the dragon scale, he could dig it up out of the sand because dogs like to dig, except this dog wouldn't be that good at digging, and then he would meet up with a wheelchair dragon and they could be best friends. I would have loved that. As much as I'm joking about it, as a kid, I actually really wanted a crossover episode between the shows Clifford and Clifford's Puppy Days, which is another show that follows Clifford before he was interesting, when he was tiny, so before Emily Elizabeth loved him. So there was a bunch of <laughs> new characters that all knew Clifford when he was little, and the two shows existed in the same universe, so it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford to visit his childhood home, and then all the other characters who used to call him Small or Squirt would see him now and be like, wow, what the f happened to you? You see, it's funny <laughs> because it's a kid's show and you wouldn't expect them to say that. I waited patiently for that crossover episode, but it never came. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a boy that, that go to my, they, they do coming and stuff sometimes. That nigga act just like Caillou, bro. That nigga got a bald head and everything. Like, that little boy, I be ready to hit that little nigga sometimes, bro. Cause like, he be aggravating. They had parents aggravating too, bro. Like, bro, you don't know. But y'all, y'all don't get a like, comment, share, subscribe, and